Animated One highlights the news making waves ranging from current affairs to community stories, sports and economic news. Here are the headlines from today's broadcast. I'm leaving Namibia better off, says President Gengob. Namibia considers adopting nuclear energy. Uganda scraps visa requirements for DR Congo nationals. I am Ashwin Berry. Follow all our programs on oneup 2com or DSTV 285 or GoTV 25 in Namibia. Let's head to the midday news update. A 27-year-old male nurse was arrested after he allegedly raped a woman on Sunday at Onyanya in Oshikoto region. Police said the two were drinking together at a local complex, after which the woman went to bed. She woke up with the man allegedly having sex with her. The complainant did not know how the suspect entered her sleeping room, police said. The suspect is expected to appear in the Ondangwa Magistrates Court today. Stay with Edimage at One as Namibian Sun leads us into the newspaper review segment. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Let's get into the front page of Namibian Sun. President Hage Gengob says he will be leaving Namibia in a far better state than he inherited, but admitted that the infancy of his presidency was a terrible period. He made the remarks while meeting Dundee Precious Metals President David Ray, who paid a courtesy call to State House yesterday to announce his company's acquisition of the Two Hills project from Osino Resources Corporation. In a transaction totaling 3.9 billion Namibian dollars, Gengob said the project was what Namibia was looking for, adding that economic prospects had not been rosy for a while. Independent Patriots for Change leader Dr. Pantuleni Itula says his party will remove the veterinary cordon fence once in power, adding that veterinary controls will mitigate any potential adverse effects. He made the vow during a recent party rally in Helao Nafidim. The VCF, also known as the Red Line, is a stock disease control mechanism that currently separates Namibia's northern agricultural markets from the rest of the country. Cattle farmers north of the VCF are unable to sell their agriculture products south of the fence where they can fetch competitive prices. We move over to Republican. The Ministry of Environment, Tourism and Forestry has reassured the public about the Camp Out June Fest 23 party planned for New Year's Eve in Dorob National Park. The advertisement of the Camp Out June Festival at Sekeldwin, also known as Amphitheater, has caused a stir in conservation circles who claim it is being held in a protected area. The area is located between Sokobund and Walvish Bay. The spokesperson of the ministry, Romeo Muyunda, explained that a section within the area in the park is available for functions. The people applied for a permit which was granted with conditions and in accordance with park rules. The area can be booked for similar events such as weddings and corporate functions, he said. On page 3, we have been repeating for a long time that there can be no development without power. Now we have figures, says the chief executive of the Electricity Regulatory Board, Robert Kahimise. During a news conference, Kahimise elaborated on the findings of a recent study on the cost of sudden power outages. According to the study, the Namibian economy loses up to 36.19 Namibian dollars of direct added value per kilowatt hour when power suddenly goes out. The total loss for the economy is 85.38 per kilowatt hour and for each household is about 11.12 per kilowatt. In Agomana Zeitung, the Australian company Bannerman Energy, which has been operating in the Erongo region since 2006, received the mining license for its Etango uranium project from the responsible ministry last Friday. Namibia will now receive a fifth uranium mine after Rossing Uranium, the Husab mine, 
Trekopi, currently closed, and Langa Heinrich Uranium. All locations are in the Erongo region and within conservation parks. LHU was decommissioned several years ago but will be reactivated and is expected to be operational again in April 2024. Conservancies brought rural communities a total of over 140 million Namibian dollars in cash and in kind benefits in 2022, the highest value since 2019. Community nature conservation now covers 59.6% of all communal land in Namibia, with an estimated 244,587 inhabitants, enabling 3,223 jobs. In 2022, municipal nature conservation contributed an estimated 913 million Namibian dollars to net national income. Since 1990, that has been a total of 13.4 billion. This is according to the latest figures published in the State of Community Conservation Report for 2022. You're still with NMH at one. We continue with the Namibian after the break. Welcome to my dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Master. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. We continue with the Namibian Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security Minister Albert Kawana has threatened to amend the law and immediately fire immigration officials who are rude to tourists at the country's borders. He was speaking during the official launch of the Visa on Arrival program for travelers at three gazetted borders in the Zambezi region. Rundu residents owe the Rundu Town Council 350 million Namibian dollars due to unpaid municipality debts that have accumulated over several years. According to Rundu Chief Executive Officer Olavi Latananio, the debt owed to the council hampers the council's service delivery. Latananio says without revenue, the council is unable to implement any projects and maintain existing services or extend the services. On New Era, the Visa on Arrival Enabler was officially launched for the Katima Mulilo, Ngoma and Impalila Island border posts by Home Affairs and Immigration Minister Albert Kawana on Friday. The facility is already in fact at three border posts in Namibia, namely Hosea Kutako International Airport, Wawush Bay International Airport, as well as the Trans-Kalahari border post. Kawana said this development will benefit the tourism industry in the country and the, as a whole, and with the new border posts added, there is no doubt that the Zambezi region will be a direct beneficiary. This is because tourists from countries where Namibia has no diplomatic representation no longer need to apply for visas before coming here or transitioning through the country. Plans by Kadutura residents to march up to Parliament and State House on Friday were curtailed when a representative from Parliament received their petition at Zoo Park. The idea was to demand the elimination of the City of Vinduk's debt collector Red Force, while also insisting that the city write off all outstanding debt and introduce prepaid meters for electricity and water to residents affected by outstanding debt owed to the municipality. Now in Market Watch, Trusco Group Holdings Board of Directors has once again flagged the existence of a material uncertainty which may cast significant doubt on the ability of the company to continue as a going concern in the foreseeable future. The Namibian-based group yesterday released its latest financial results, reporting a total comprehensive loss of 681 million Namibian dollars for the year ended 31 August 2023. Now this is a massive plunge from a profit of 1.399 billion in its previous financial year. The group declared no dividend for its 2023 book year. Net asset value per share decreased by 37 percent and this was to 117 cents per share compared to the NAVPS of 186 cents in respect of the 2022 financial year. Mines and Energy Minister Tom Alwendo says Namibia is considering adopting nuclear energy. More on this in economic news after the break.
listen to another exciting episode of Iran World Talk. We bring you all the latest news and for the world for the very first year of the pandemic. Let's get into our economic news story. Mines and Energy Minister Tom Alwendo says Namibia is considering adopting nuclear energy as part of its energy mix, but this is something that is only being considered in the long term. He made the comments during a recent cabinet update on his ministry's activities. If you look at our National Integrated Resource Plan, which is our long-term plan, you would notice that nuclear energy, while it is not an immediate thing, it could be part of our mix in the long run, he said. Now, Alwendo explains that even if Namibia favorably considered making nuclear energy part of its energy mix, there would be a lot of scrutiny before the country would be granted the right to produce the energy source. Long process, the potential of nuclear is part of our long-term plan. The only thing we know is if we go that route, it's a long process in terms of having the right technical skills. We also know that when people speak nuclear, even before you say electricity, they think about weapons. Therefore, there is a stringent regime for you to get to use nuclear electricity. It is a lengthy process, he said. In response to queries by state-owned publication New Era, the World Nuclear Agency recently said there are no limitations on Namibia adopting nuclear energy as part of its energy mix. Let's head to the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at 18.56 to the US dollar, 23.44 getting you a British pound, 2.60 gets you a Chinese one, and 20.27 translates to one euro. Most selected NSX stock closing prices maintained their value. However, Namibia Breweries Limited had an uptick of plus 0.03%. Overall index closed down minus 1.20%, whilst Trusco Group Holdings is up 66.70%, Rx Property is up 0.10%, whilst Nectus maintains its value. Looking at commodities, gold, Brent, crude oil and platinum are all in the red. Copper is in the green, plus 1.15%. Now, Uganda on Monday announced that Congolese nationals would no longer need visas to enter its territory. Stay with us as we get into news from Africa. We are so excited to be kick-starting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Let's get into the news from Africa. With an eye toward regional integration and cross-border trade, Uganda yesterday announced that Congolese nationals would no longer need visas to enter its territory. And this is as of January the 1st, 2024. This concludes a process that has been marred by multiple negotiations since the Democratic Republic of Congo joined the East African community in July 2022. With the waiver, the DRC is now able to enjoy the benefits of the region, including free movement of people among member states as specified in the EAC Common Market Protocol, wherein partner states are required by Article 7 to permit citizens of other partner states to enter without a visa. During the 8th Joint Permanent Commission held on October 11 to 15, 2023 in Kishasa DRC, both parties agreed on principle to waive the visa requirement for citizens of both countries on a reciprocal basis, said Uganda's Ministry of Internal Affairs in a statement. Following the MOVE agreement, Cabinet Minute 
374 considered the matter and it was resolved to remove the visa requirement for Ugandan and Congolese nationals to enter and exit the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Republic of Uganda respectively, he said. A huge explosion at the main oil terminal in Guinea's capital, Conakry, has killed at least eight people and wounded dozens, and this is according to officials. The explosion blew out the windows of nearby houses in downtown Conakry, and hundreds of residents fled the area, eyewitnesses said. The authorities have ordered schools in the city to close and urged workers to stay at home. The explosion was caused by a fire. It is unclear what started the blaze. Eight shard bodies were brought to the morgue of the Ignance Dean Hospital, a senior official at the facility told AFP News Agency. Media reports of the number of people injured vary from 84 to 100. The fire broke out at around midnight local time and was still raging hours later. The government has ordered the evacuation of residents in the area. The blaze and billowing back smoke could be seen miles away, Reuters News reports. Stay with us as we head into international news. Namibians are still safe. Everywhere else, the Supreme Court said we are not going to rely on foreign judgments. By all means, we try to not make changes, public figures, but at the end of the day, they are. Uh, very good evening. My name is Tewen Jebela, your host. With their Protestant offsprings. But the implementation, like she say, is another thing. Let's get straight into our international news stories. A volcano has erupted on the Reykjan James Peninsula of southwest Iceland after weeks of intense earthquake activity. About 4,000 people were earlier evacuated from the fishing town of Grindavik and the nearby Blue Lagoon Geothermal Spa was closed. The eruption started north of the town at 17 past 10 local time, the Icelandic Met Office said. The region around the capital Reykjavik has been experiencing an increase in earthquake activity since late October. The Met Office said that the eruption was located about four kilometers northwest of Grindavik and the seismic activity was moving towards the town. Images and videos posted on social media showed lava bursting from the volcano just an hour after an earthquake swarm or seismic events were dictated. The eruption can be seen from Reykjavik, which is about 24 kilometers northeast of Grindavik. One eyewitness there told the BBC that half of the sky in the direction of the town was lit up in red from the eruption and smoke could be seen billowing into the air into the air rather police have warned people to stay away from the area the length of the crack in the volcano is about 3.5 kilometers with the lava flowing at a rate of around 100 to 200 cubic meters per second at the met office said a senior police officer at the civil defense said the lava appeared to be flowing in all directions from a large crack in the volcano Iceland's foreign minister Bijani Benedictson said on X, formerly Twitter, that there are no disruptions to flights to and from Iceland and international flight corridors remain open. In the U.S., Texas Governor Greg Abbott on Monday signed a new law allowing state law enforcement to arrest people suspected of crossing the U.S.-Mexico border illegally, giving local officers powers long delegated to the U.S. government in a move likely to trigger legal challenges. The law, known as SB4, will take effect in March and create a new state crime for illegal entry or re-entry into Texas, with penalties ranging from 180 days to in jail to 20 years in prison. Texas magistrate judges will be required to order magistrates migrants to return to Mexico with up to 20-year sentences for those who refuse to comply. Migrants who cross illegally can already be charged with illegal entry or re-entry under federal laws, but Abbott has sharply criticized U.S. President Joe Biden for failing to enforce them. Biden's deliberate inaction has left Texas to fend for itself, Abbott said during a press conference in front of a stretch of state-funded border wall in Brownsville, Texas. Abbott also signed a bill that would devote $1.5 billion to border war construction and other operations funding that comes on top of five billion in state funds already appropriated for border enforcement. News from the world of sports starting locally follows the break. Welcome to What's Cooking where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouth-watering dishes. 
Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. In local sport, Philip Seidler's Team Flippy organization will host the Team Flippy Open Water Splash at Swakopmund today. Namibian Open Water Swimming Champion Seidler achieved a remarkable 16th position at the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo. Said to be held at the famous small beach, the event is designed to engage swimmers in solo, two-person and four-person team categories and will cover a distance of two kilometers, regardless of skill level. At least 28 individual swimmers, six two-person teams and four four-person teams had entered by late yesterday. In a bid to combine festive cheer and spirited competition, the Swakopmund Football Club Sports Ground is set to host the eagerly awaited Christmas Cup tournament. Now the upcoming football extravaganza promises four days of thrilling matches, uniting football enthusiasts and fostering community bonds during the holiday season. The tournament will kick off with league matches scheduled for 26 and 28 December, while social matches are set for 27 and 29 December. This dynamic schedule aims to cater to both serious competitors and those seeking more relaxed experiences. Now, the 26th annual Penguin Angling Club Public Open Ski Boat Tournament is slated to take place in Sokopmund on the 29th of this month. According to club chairperson and tournament organizer Alan Langenstrassen, the event will be hosted at Plaza Mir Mall and is part of the club's fundraising activities and has always been a great attraction for tourists and holiday makers. The tournament normally attracts some 250 anglers on 40 boats. It starts at 8 a.m. 8 am rather, and concludes at 1 p.m. The competition caters for edible fish with, and game fish with cash prizes for the heaviest fish in all categories. Sharks are excluded from this competition to reduce wastage and overfishing. Now, Lang and Strassen said depending on the conditions, boats could possibly come in at the Moor Basin with the weigh-in taking place at Platz Am Meer. Stay with NMH at 1 as we talk Manchester City finally being fined in international sport. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune in to Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Another exciting episode of Iran World Talk. We bring you the latest here and tell what we are about first. You want to come back. Now, as you know, earlier in the season, Everton was fined for allegedly, not for allegedly, for breaching FA rules, which changed their position in the Premier League. I think they went down about 14 places, and currently they're fighting their way from the bottom. And the conversation around football circles was that there's so many accusations facing clubs like Manchester City, and they haven't had to face the same accountability until now, because they've been fined £120,000 by the Football Association. However, this is after the their players surrounded a match official during their dramatic 3-3 draw against Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League earlier this month. Several Manchester City players surrounded referee Simon Hooper late in the game on December 3 after he stopped play when Jack Grealish was through on goal for a foul on Erling Haaland in the build-up, having previously waved play on. Manchester City FC admitted that they failed to ensure their players did not behave in an improper way during the 94th minute. Now, an independent regulatory commission imposed this sanction following a hearing, the FA said on Monday. 
City drew a third successful league match when Tottenham Hotspur's Dejan Kulusevski headed the 90th minute equaliser after Grealish's 81st minute goal looked to have secured the win. South African two-time Olympic champion Kasta Semenya has expressed her dissatisfaction with world athletics, condemning what she perceived as unjust treatment. Kasta Semenya successfully appealed to the European Court of Human Rights to contest potential infringements on her rights over a world athletics regulation regarding high testosterone levels in female athletes. Now, in an exclusive interview with SABC Sport, the 32-year-old accused the Global Athletics Organization of racial bias, lamenting that such policies hinder aspirations of a young girl from rural villages across Africa. Winning an appeal also shows you that there are people out there who realize athletes are being robbed. So we need to do what is right for athletes. We need to protect athletes, she told SABC Sport. Staying with South Africa, South Africa has been dealt a blow after all-rounder Andile Petlukwayo was ruled out of the remainder of the one-day international series against India ahead of the second game to be played in Khabeha on Tuesday. Now Petlukwayo, who top scored with 33 in South Africa's paltry innings total of 116 in an eight-wicket loss in the opening match on Sunday, has a side strain. Uncapped Sima Otinio Bartman is also out of the squad with the same injury and has been replaced by Buran Hendricks, who won the last of his eight ODI caps in 2021. If you're just joining us, this is NMH at One, and we'll get into the highlights from today's broadcast after the break. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. Namibians are still safe. Everywhere else, the Supreme Court said we are not going to rely on foreign judgments. By all means, we try to not make changes, public figures, but at the end of the day, they are. Uh, very good evening. My name is Tewen Jebela, your host. With their uh, Protestant offsprings. But the implementation, like she's saying, is another thing. In today's highlights, with an eye toward regional integration and cross-border trade, Uganda yesterday announced that Congolese nationals would no longer need visas to enter its territory as of the 1st of January 2024. A volcano has erupted on the Reyk Jains Peninsula of southwest Iceland after weeks of intense earthquake activity. And Philip Seidler's Team Flippy organization will host the Team Flippy Open Water Splash at Swakoburnt today. Those have been your highlights. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with Enemich at 1, catching up on the latest stories in Namibia, Africa, and the world. My name is Ashwin Berry. Cheers.